Hello, this is your guide for Tuesday, June 2nd in Work Packet 6. At the end of the video, we'll listen to five little monkeys jumping on a bed on Epic Books. But let's do our work first. So we'll start with our printing. You're going to write your name here in your nicest letters. So if your name was John, you would go nice and slow and put your name here. You're not John, so please put your real name so I know who did the work. And now we will practice the number one, how to print the number one. So we start at the top and we go down, touch the bottom line. Start at the top line, touch the bottom line. Top, bottom, top, bottom. Again and again. And down here, top to bottom, top to bottom. Finger space, top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom. Try to fill up the whole line, but make sure you have spaces in between. And keep going. Start at the top line, touch the bottom. And please finish the rest of these lines. And then down here, this is how you spell the number one, O-N-E. Follow the dotted lines around. Touch the bottom, the middle, the bottom. E, you start in the middle of the letter. You come up, touch the middle line, come down, touch the bottom. And again, touch the bottom, touch the top. Middle, bottom, middle, bottom. Come up, touch the middle, touch the bottom. The more you practice your letters like this, the nicer your printing will get. It's very important to have nice printing. And down here, try by yourself. The whole point of writing something is so you or somebody else can read it later. Some of you write like this. Does that look okay? No. We need to slow down and use the lines. Okay, and if you look at this uh, box down here, how many boxes do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten boxes. And how many are colored in? Just the one, because it's the number one. And tomorrow we'll do two. And then three, four, five, all the way up to ten. Okay, let's move on to our daily language review. And today, all about punctuation and writing sentences. Daily language review. Use the correct punctuation. A period, this dot. Like, for example, my name is Sophia, period. Put your paper in the green box, period. Question mark, like this. For example, do you like to read about animals? And exclamation point, like this. For example, I am so happy. Down here, Sophia is a new girl at your school. This is Sophia. Write a question that you would like to ask Sophia. So remember, a question will end with a question mark. So what's something we want to ask the new girl? What do you do for fun? And it's a question. So we end our sentence with a question mark. What do you do for fun? Next one, write a sentence that tells Sophia something about you. So now we're going to tell her something. We're just stating a fact, so it will end with a period. Something about me. Hi, Sophia. I am a wing. Nut. 
period. I am a wingnut. Write a sentence that tells Sophia how to do something. So now we're going to tell her, that's where the bathroom is. This is how you put the books away. Something like that. And that will end with a period again. So what are we going to tell her how to do? She's a new student. This is how we line up. Remember, we line up in numbered order. Maybe she doesn't know that. This is how we line up, period. Last one, write a sentence that uses an exclamation point to tell Sophia something. So an exclamation like this. And this is for when you're excited. Uh, we want to tell Sophia something. I really like her sweater. See these polka dots? And let's tell her that. She's a new kid. It'll make her feel good. I really like your sweater. I really like your sweater. Exclamation point. There we go. So you see, we need different punctuation for different kinds of sentences. Are you asking a question? Are you telling her something? Or are you excited? OK, let's go to story time. Big catch. This one's all about baseball. Please read the story and answer the questions. We're going to hear lots of words that end with ch, ch, like lunch, sandwich, and peach. And the story is called My Big Catch. You see a boy here, and he's catching a baseball. And let's read the questions. Number one, what did Finch eat for lunch? Number two, who came to watch Finch? Number three, what did Finch say in his speech? Okay, let's read it. My big catch. Finch had a big game. Before his game, he ate lunch. He had a sandwich and a peach. Then it was time for Finch's game. The game was by the beach. His mom came to watch his game. Wow, what a good catch, said his mom. After his game, Finch gave a speech. He said, Thank you, coach. You did a good job teaching me how to catch. Okay, question one. What did Finch eat for lunch? Remember, he had a sandwich and a peach. Sandwich and a peach. Uppercase at the start of our answer. We should say, a ah, sandwich and a peach. So uppercase A, a sand which and a peach. Period. Number two, who came to watch Finch? Okay, then it was time for Finch's game. The game was by the beach. His mom came to watch his game. His mama. Who came to watch Finch? His mama. Number three, what did Finch say in his speech? What did he say? Remember, when someone in a story is talking, we'll see uh, quotation marks. Wow, what a good catch, said his mom. After his game, Finch gave a speech. He said, thank you, coach. You did a good job teaching me how to catch. So all of this is what he was saying. Because we can see these exclamation marks at the start and at the end. So we're going to write it just like that. What did Finch say in his speech? Quotation marks, not exclamations. Quotation marks. Thank you, coach. Thank you, coach. 
period. You did a good job teaching me how to catch. You did a, I won't jump down here because we're out of space. Good job teaching me, teaching me how to catch, period. And he's done talking now, so quotation marks again. Thank you, coach. You did a good job teaching me how to catch. You ever played baseball before? Do you like it? I hope in gym class we'll get to play baseball. Maybe there could even be a baseball if you guys like it enough. Okay. Today we're talking about addition and subtraction of three-digit numbers. So in grade three, you need to know how to add and subtract three-digit numbers, how to check and estimate answers. You need to understand the relationship between addition and subtraction, and you need to solve word problems. So let's take a, take a look at this picture here. We've got a mouse. He's stealing some cheese, 326 pieces, 289. And in his head, he's thinking, how many numbers of cheese cubes did I steal? 326 plus 289. 6 plus 9, 15, carry the 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 8 is 11, carry the 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. He stole 615 pieces of cheese. And he's saying, I can move 615 cheese cubes. Okay. Add or subtract. I did number 1 for you. Start in the 1's place. 4 plus 3 equals 7. 2 plus 8 equals 10. Carry the 1. 1 plus 3 equals 4. 4 plus 1 equals 5. 507. Okay, let's do a few more. Start in the ones place. 3 plus 7. Or 7 plus 3. 7 plus 1, 2, 3 equals 10. 0 goes here. Carry the 1. 1 plus 6. Or 6 plus 1 equals 7. 7 plus 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 15. 5 goes here. Carry the 1. 1 plus 4, or 4 plus 1, equals 5 plus 2. 1, 2 equals 7. 750. Number 3. Start in the ones place. 6 plus 7. 6 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 13. 3 goes here, carry the 1. 1 plus 0 equals 1 plus 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 equals 8. Oh, hoo, hoo, I got tricked. Did you see what I did wrong? I made a big mistake. Oh, hoo. Okay, watch. So we're on number three. Look what I forgot. This isn't addition. It's takeaway, minus. Wow, I almost got fooled. Okay, watch this. Six take away seven. Can we do that? Six take away one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can't go that far. So we need to borrow. Can we borrow from a zero? No. So now the tens have to borrow from the hundreds. Five turns to four, and zero turns to ten. Now six will borrow from ten. Ten turns to nine, and six turns to sixteen. Now we can do sixteen take away seven. 16 take away 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9 in the 1's place. And in the 10's, 9 take away 7. 9 take away 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 2 in the 10's place. And in the 100's, 4 take away 2. 4 take away 1, 2. 2 in the 100's, so 229. Got to be really careful. Is it adding or subtracting? Got to be really careful. Okay. Number four. Start in the ones place. Four take away nine. 
you can't do that. So we have to borrow from the tens. Eight turns to seven. Four turns to 14. 14 take away nine. 14 take away one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Five in the ones place. Seven take away nine. You can't do that. You got to borrow from the hundreds. Nine turns to eight. Seven turns to 17. 17 take away nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Equals eight in the tens place. And eight take away three. Eight take away one, two, three, five in the hundreds place. 585. That looks really sloppy. Let's make it look nice. We want 585. Okay. I want you to do number five and number six. And pay attention. Five is takeaway. Six is adding. Always look at the symbol or you'll get fooled like I did. Okay, I'll do number seven and you'll do number eight. 65 plus 708. So we can do it sideways. We still have to start in the ones place. So in the ones we have a five and an eight. So we do and it's adding so 5 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 13. So a 3 goes in the 1's place, and we're going to carry a 1 right there. Now we go to the 10's place. We have 6, 0, and 1. So 6 plus 0 equals 6 plus 1 equals 7. 7 in the 10's place. And now the 100's, there's no 100's here, and there's a 7 here, so we just... Put the 7 there. It's like dropping the 7. So 773. Number 8 is take away. You know what? We'll do this one together. Start in the ones place. 7 take away 4. 7 take away 1, 2, 3, 4. You got a 3 in the ones place. And now the tens place. 1 take away 9. You can't do that, so we borrow from the hundreds. 2 turns to 1. 1 turns to 11. Now 11 take away 9. 11 take away 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Equals a 2 in the tens place. And in the hundreds, there's nothing here. And there's still a 1 left over. So it's 123. Okay, down here, do the subtraction, then check the answers. Do you remember how this works? Take a look at number 9. I did it for you. So number nine, the question was 524 take away 162. And my answer was 362. Now how do I check? What I'm going to do is I'm going to add my answer to the bottom number. 362 plus 162. And if the answer here matches the top number, I did it right. And you see 524, 524. That's how we check. That's how we understand the relationship between addition and subtraction. Okay, let's do another one. Question 10. Start in the ones place. Zero take away four. You can't do that. Can I borrow from a zero? Nope. So we got to go over again. Borrow from the hundreds. Two turns to one. Zero turns to ten. Now the ones can borrow from the tens. Ten turns to nine. Zero turns to ten. Ten take away four. Ten take away one, two, three, four. Equals six in the ones place. Nine take away five. Nine take away one, two, three, four, five. Four in the tens. And one take away one equals zero. We don't start numbers with zero. So the answer is 46. Now let's check if we got it right. We're going to add 46 and 154. 46 plus 154. Start in the ones place. 6 plus 4. 6 plus 1, 2, 3, 4 equals 10. 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 4. 1 plus 1, 2, 3, 4 equals 5. Plus 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 equals 10. 0, carry the 1. 
1 plus 1 equals 2, 200. And that's the same number that was on top. So yes, we got the right answer. Do you see how it works? Okay, I'll do number 11, but you're going to do number 12 by yourself. Okay, let's go blue. Start in the ones place. 5, take away 3. 5, take away 1, 2, 3, equals 2. 0, take away 7. You can't do that. you got to borrow from the hundreds. 4 turns to 3. 0 turns to 10. 10, take away 7. 10, take away 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 3 in the tens place. Now 3 take away 1. 3 take away 1 equals 2. 232. Let's check. We're going to add 232 and 173. 232 plus 173. Start in the ones place. <gasps> 2 plus 3. 2 plus 1, 2, 3 equals 5. 3 plus 7. Or why don't we do 7 plus 1, 2, 3 equals 10. Carry the 1. 1 plus 2, 1, 2, plus 1, equals 4. 405 is the same as the top number. We got it. Do you understand? You try again. Number 12, do it yourself. Show me that you understand. Try your best. Okay, number of the day. And we have a nice little teeny baby number today. Oh, just kidding. And multiplication table. Number of the day is next. Now we're starting to talk about telling time and multiplying. Okay, word problems and multiplication table. Activity one, look at the schedule to answer the questions. Okay, remember Sophia at the start, the new kid at school? Here's her schedule. 6 a.m., wake up. 8 a.m., school starts. 10.30 a.m., recess. 12 p.m., lunch. 3 p.m., school ends. 5 p.m., do homework. That's her whole day. Question one, what does Sophia do at 12 p.m.? At 12, she has lunch. Number two, at what time does Sophia wake up? When does she wake up? That's at 6 a.m. 6 a.m. Number three, how long is Sophia at school? This is a little trickier to find out, but we can do it. So when does school start? School starts at 8 a.m. and it ends at 3 p.m. Okay, so 8 a.m. 9, 10, 11, 12. And then after 12, you go back to 1, 2, 3. That's how many hours she was at school. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 hours. Ooh, that's not a very nice 8. I'm sorry, my board is kind of funky today. She goes to school for eight hours. Okay, moving on. Activity two, complete the table. Multiplication. So when we're talking about questions like three times four, that means I have three groups of four. One, two, three, four, that's one group. One, two, three, four, that's two groups. One, two, three, four. So I have three groups of four. Four, eight, 12. Or I could say I'm skip counting by three, four times. Three, six, nine, 12, same thing. Now a multiplication table is a way to think about all of these multiplication questions at the same time. If you can get this stuck in your brain, you're gonna be super good at this. Like you'll just know seven times seven is 49, just cause you'll practice so much. So here's how it works. One times one equals one. 
I skip count by one once. One. Now two times one. I'll skip count by two once. So it's two. Three times one equals three. Four times one equals four. Do you see a pattern? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you see any number times one equals the same number. Now let's look at number two. One times two I'll, I have one group of two, so that means I have two. Now two times two, two groups of two, or skip count by two, two times. Two, four. Now I'm going to skip count by three, two times. Three, six. Skip count by four, two times. Four, eight. Skip count by five, two times. Five, ten. Skip count by six, two times. Six, twelve. Look at the pattern. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. We're going up by 2s. 14, 16, 18, 20. So that means 8 times 2 equals 16. You see how that works? You see how skip counting helps us a lot. So let's look at number 3. Pretty soon you're going to see there's a big pattern here, and we can use that. Two groups of three, or skip count by two three times. Two, four, six. Skip count by three three times. Three, six, nine. Skip count by four three times. Four, eight, twelve. Okay, now that we've got more numbers, check this out. We don't always have to go sideways. We can go down. Look what's happening here. 4, 8, 12, 16. We're skip counting by 4s. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40. So that means 4 times 9 equals 36. Pretty cool, huh? I'm not going to do the whole table for you because I think you can figure it out. We'll do a couple more here. Use your patterns. It's not cheating. It's really, really smart to find patterns and use them. Look at 5. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So if I asked you what is... 8 times 5, you would know that it equals 40. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, look at the tens. We'll go down 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So we know 10 times 7 equals 70. OK, I'll do the 8s. That'll be the last one. And you do the rest. So 8, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, 72, 80. So if I asked you, what is 6 times 8? You would know it's 48. And do you remember the skip counting numbers I gave you in your homework package? Use those to help you. This is a really good thing to know. Multiplication table. Okay, try your best to finish the rest. If you can get those numbers stuck in your brain, you are going to be so far ahead of everybody. You're going to do great. Okay, now it's time for number of the day and our little baby number. Six 
all we're going to do is today. Okay, complete as many sections as you can. My number is six. So, how many tens do we have? There is no tens, so that means zero. Zero tens equals zero. How many ones? We've got six. And six ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, still equals six. Zero plus six equals six. Now, same thing in the place value chart. How many tens? We already answered that. Zero tens, how many ones? Six. What's one less? Remember, less means you're going down. So one less than six, going backwards, equals five. What's one more? Remember, more means you're getting more. You're going up. One more than six would be seven. Round to the nearest ten. So we've got zero and ten. Those are our options. And what's in the middle? Five. So if your number is five or bigger, you're going to go up to ten. Six comes after five, so we go up to ten. Round to ten. Ordinal number, like you're in a race with ten people, and you came in sixth place. Sixth. You've got to put the TH there. That's why it's ordinal. Order. Record on a number line. 0 to 100, and each one of these dashes is 10. 0, 10, 20, and we know we don't got to go all the way up. We know 6 is right about there. Told you, the baby number. What my number looks like using base 10 blocks. So let's think about our place value. 0, 10, so we don't touch it. 6 ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's it. Plus 10. Okay, 6 plus 10. 6 plus 0 equals 6. Drop the 1. 16. Take away 10. This is a little tricky. Watch this. Don't worry about it. You don't really need to know this yet, but it's fun. 6 take away 10 equals negative 4. Yes, there are negative numbers. Did you know that? Odd or even. Odd numbers end with 1, 3, 5, 7 or 9, even numbers end with 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. And our number is 6, so that's what it ends with. And 6 is even, put a bunch of check marks in there. Record a number pattern starting at your number. Watch this 6, 1006, 1000, oh, <laughs> 2006, 3006. 4,006, what's my pattern? I'm going up by 1,000. Just because we start with a baby number doesn't mean we can't go up by 1,000. 5,006, 6,006. Okay, my number in words. How do you spell six? S-I-X, that's it, six. See, baby number. All right, great work today. Got your brain going, didn't I? We need a break. Let's head on over to Epic Books and Five Little Monkeys. Five Little Monkeys Jumping on the Bed. Retold and illustrated by Eileen Cristalo. It was bedtime, so five little monkeys took a bath. Five little monkeys put on their pajamas. Five little monkeys brush their teeth. Five little monkeys said goodnight to their mama. Then five little monkeys jumped on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. The mama called the doctor. The doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So four little monkeys jumped on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. The mama called the doctor. The doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So three little monkeys jumped on the bed. One fell off and bumped her head. The mama called the doctor. The doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. 
So two little monkeys jumped on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. The mama called the doctor. The doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So one little monkey jumped on the bed. She fell off and bumped her head. The mama called the doctor. The doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So five little monkeys fell fast asleep. Thank goodness, said the mama. Now I can go to bed. <laughs> five little monkeys jumping on the bed. Let's get some points. All right. We're halfway through level seven. Okay, there's lots of other bedtime stories like that. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. We got little Bo Peep. Yes. So on tomorrow's video, on Wednesday, we'll listen to another book. Maybe Humpty Dumpty. Who knows? Okay, wing nuts. Thanks for doing your homework. That's me. This is all of you doing your homework, being so good. Remember, it's the last package before summer. So try your best. How many wing nuts we got here? Let's count the wing nuts. Uh, you need legs, though, and arms. So many wing nuts. And here's me. <laughs> here's my buttons. There's my pocket. And here's my hair. Okay. This is me. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 little wing nuts doing their homework. Thank you so much. You're the best. Keep it up. Keep it up, guys. We're almost there. See you for tomorrow's video on Wednesday. Au revoir. Bye-bye.